Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a quick little chit chat video of you guys on something I've been thinking about a lot lately. These thoughts will come into my head about all the skills that I've learned outside of university. And I really wanted to talk about the skills I believe you learn outside of school, skills that the school, the school system, at least in North America, doesn't tend to teach you. And ones that you're not gonna learn from your teachers or peers in school. I think it's really things that you learn once leaving school or you know, if you didn't go to university or college, leaving directly out of high school, I think these are skills you're going to pick up quicker. So before I keep rambling on about that, let's hop into the first skill that I believe you learn outside of school and that school doesn't teach you. And I don't know what to call this first skill, so I'm going to call it niftiness. What I mean by this is kind of like thinking outside of the box. I don't know if I'd call it necessarily the entrepreneurial mindset, but kind of along those lines. As for me, it's kind of using unconventional methods and learning unconventional skills. And I felt I learned this because... <laughs> When I left school, it was peak pandemic, and and I didn't go into the career field that you know matched up with my degree that my degree was preparing me for, and so I decided to break into a different career field, and I had to figure out how to learn all these new skills. And the internet was great because I took a bunch of online courses. I got really nifty <laughs> where I'd pick up the skills, do some volunteering. It's kind of like figuring out like an unconventional way to get to the target. And I think in school it's very much cookie cutter, like you do these steps and you follow these guidelines to get to the point that you want to get to. So I am talking specifically about university and I'm biased with my experience within a science degree, but I did feel that the degree in itself, even in a test, it was very much you have to do it one way to get to the correct answer. And I, I get this in a respect to science. I understand why this is enforced. You know, if you're figuring out a mathematical problem, why they want you to do it a certain way to get to that point. But it doesn't totally translate to life. Like life isn't like that. You don't just do the same steps to get to a certain point. Everyone's doing different things to get where they get to. I felt I had to get very nifty and creative with figuring out a way to break into the career field that I had zero formal training in. And so I suggest to anyone, whether you are currently in school or not, take advantage of as many online courses as you can, especially anything that naturally interests you. You may end up taking a unconventional approach when looking for what career field to go into too, and you might change your mind. You know, like you could leave school and not go down the path that you're thinking you're going to. So it's good to get used to and getting comfortable with figuring out things on your own. Who knows what happens when you leave school? Could be a financial crisis, could be a pandemic. You really don't know. So I think the nifty skill, I wish I'd gotten my hands on that earlier and, and figured out how to be more like that while in school. And it's definitely a skill I had to learn once I left school. My second skill that I believe school can't teach you, again, this is very biased for this one. I think some of you will disagree with me on this, is creativity. So in my opinion, um, again, I wasn't in the most creative degree, but I, I did think I don't know if it's just the pressure we put on ourselves as students, but I didn't learn how making mistakes can actually be a good thing and there could be a, a good mistake, like a good accident that takes you to a different point and how that might actually turn out better. I felt like having original ideas, like I know in science they used to rip me apart with my reports for having language that was too flowery, but I always think there's beauty in the in-between stuff and not getting just straight to the point. I think I'm just maybe more of an artistic person that way, but I did find that it was quite narrow in my degree and I didn't have as much, I don't know, creative perspectives. It's hard for me to put into words. And I, I have heard that once you take your PhD or your master's, there is a bit more freedom in this realm as you have more creative freedom in what you're choosing to do. But at the end of the day, I think nothing beats the creative freedom that you have outside of school and on your own terms. But basically, outside of school, I have found that I've learned much more about my creativity, what I'm capable of, whether that be with writing, painting, creating videos, learning new Adobe products. Possibilities have been endless and Again, this is largely thanks to the internet where so much is available to use to grow your creativity and expand your capabilities. And I think that could be like a whole other subject on how nowadays because of the internet, the ability to learn has really broadened beyond the scope of school. I think maybe back in the day when, you know, it wasn't as accessible, like you can just Google something if you're curious about it, university would be the place to go to. But nowadays, you know, if you want to learn something, you can look it up online. I think granted, you know, if you became a doctor or something, you're going to need that formal training. But I think in the creative space, it's amazing what you can teach yourself online. And um, I'm really thankful that we have those opportunities. Third one, this one, <laughs> I think... I, 
would point this towards high school because I think the public like school system, this should be ingrained in it because I think it's really important and that is finances and money. So whether that's taxes, business taxes, you know, like invoices, expenses, how to save, how to invest, loans. Another thing that has to do with money is how to value your time, you know, negotiating pay and hours when you get a job. I could make a whole video on this one and you know I probably wouldn't though because I could talk about all the things I wish school taught us but I still don't understand, you know, finances as well as I should and I think it's something I'm still constantly trying to figure out but I really do think the school system should teach more on the subject because everyone who lives in society should have a basic knowledge of their finances and how it all works and my only advice here from what I've learned so far is actually YouTube is really, really helpful with this. I think a lot of people have really good ways of breaking down finances in a way that's super understandable to the common person who didn't have a financial, you know, background or didn't take accounting or something along those lines. Like I, I think they break it down in a way that makes a lot more sense. And I do think it's something that everyone should try get a good grasp of because we all need to make money in this world, whether we like it or not. And we all need to figure out how to use that money, how to save it, how to spend it, how to invest it. And I'm rambling now, but that is a topic that I feel quite passionate about the education system, you know, implementing. I think everyone needs a little bit more of that. All right, my fourth skill that I think you don't really get taught in school and one that I think is really important is how to say no. And yeah, I just think how to be selective with what you take on, what you choose to focus on is super important. And I didn't realize how important until I left school. Yeah, this one's a biggie and one that I find challenging still. Sure, we work on group projects and socialize with peers at school and we're taught you know, somewhat how to delegate tasks, but you're not really taught to say no. I found at least with my experience that you're taught that the more you take on, the better, especially if university. And I could speak, you know, really to the terms of getting into something like med school or law school beyond your initial degree, how they expect you to take, at least in Canada, five courses every semester to show that you can, you know, hold up the course load. And then you're gonna need a perfect GPA and then you need to volunteer. And you can't just volunteer, you know, sporadically, you need to volunteer consistently to show you're consistently capable of this. And then run clubs and have activities and hobbies and interests outside of school. And it's, it's a lot. And I understand why they want the best of the best when it comes to, especially, you know, going into med school. It's a very um, important job and one where you have people's lives in your hands, but I do think sometimes it really just leaves people burnt out. And since leaving school, I've learned how important it is to sometimes just focus on one thing at a time. You know, burnout is very real when there's too much on your plate and we're not superhuman. <laughs> at some point, this burnout will catch up with you. And I also think no one really ever discusses how doing one thing really well is sometimes better than doing a thousand things at a lower level and just spreading yourself out too thin. It's just like how on YouTube they say finding a niche is really important to grow your channel. I don't th think this is necessarily like, I don't think you should niche yourself down too much. I think people, you know, follow you also because of other reasons, but I do understand this because people who are, you know, interested in that niche will find you. And second of all, you ideally will become really good in that realm, in that niche because you focus on it. and. Sometimes focusing on one thing can be really important, you know, just really honing your skills in that area. So again, I kind of went off topic a little bit, but my main takeaway is to practice saying no and that balance is key. And sometimes it is good to focus on just one thing at a time. And that's something I've only really learned after leaving university. My fifth skill is quite broad. I mean, I think all the skills I've listed are quite broad, but healthy habits. <laughs> this is something that I think if anything, university sways you away from. I mean, dietary needs, the importance of exercise, and um, gut health. That's something that I've had issues with over the years. Stress and sleep. Yeah, this feels like a kind of obvious skill, especially for those of you who studied late hours at school and struggled to balance grades with your health. I think, if anything, university taught me how to run on a minimal sleep, a minimum of four coffees a day, and I also think I developed gut issues while in university, probably like, from the stress, but I would have extreme bloating and acne. And it's only really cleared up since I left. So yeah, school didn't really teach me any good healthy habits. And I, I think even in high school, I mean, granted, I don't remember it too well, but I don't think health class went over diet, exercise, sleep, and stress in a, in a way that really stuck with me. 
I don't know, it's probably very much like a textbook definition of it all, but this is something where I think the internet has helped a lot again. Since leaving school, I've really tried to focus more on my health because I've had more time to think about it. And I find things like even TikTok is more helpful <laughs> when talking about health advice. Like you can find so much on there and some of the advice has actually been really useful. So I'd say like when you have the time, because I know in school it's really hard to find the time to focus on your health, you know, you should prioritize it and learn the skill of having healthy habits and that's something I myself am still working on. All right, so I already went through five points, but I do have a little extra one that I think relates to any of those who go into the corporate world when they leave school. But I, I think this kind of actually applies to any workplace and that is workplace etiquette. So such as email etiquette, um, online calls and the formalities. So this one's interesting because I find it applies mainly to those looking to go into a corporate role or one where, you know, a lot of communication is done digitally. And I think perhaps a business degree would have you well covered here but other degrees in high school like maybe not so much and I think because of COVID this has become really important you want to make sure you you learn how to sound polite how to have good etiquette online how to be assertive you know you don't want to be too polite because you still want to get your point across and um, how long do you leave an email before getting back to someone when do you sign off on an email do you continue signing off like your name and signature on the email even when the email chain keeps going how do you become more personable and you know when do you turn your camera on on Zoom calls and team meetings and when do you take a work break? Do you let people know when you're stepping away to take a work break from the camera? Because like there's all these digital rules and I think everyone's still kind of figuring that out and these are a lot of questions I had through a variety of jobs that I've had since leaving school online and my advice here is you know kind of go with what you would consider plight. Usually common sense will help you with this but it, it can be really tough to navigate and I think it would help to have some of those skills implemented in probably high school nowadays because you know university is quite broad and not everyone's going to go down a business degree but having some simple workplace etiquette rules kind of built in at a younger age would help you with the stress of figuring this all out once you enter the workplace. At the end of the day I think my number one tip for all of these questions and figuring out how to handle things online in a workplace is always think about how you would feel when receiving that message. But don't get too in your head about this because sometimes I would. I'd be overthinking everything like oh like did that sound too harsh or am I not asking for enough or delivering enough and you know am I sounding formal enough so you'll get used to it as you're in the workplace and each workplace is also quite different you have to kind of read the room but um yeah at the end of the day I wish we did learn more of those skills in a school environment I think it would have been really helpful but I think this just shows like <laughs> I could probably keep going with this there's so many skills that you learn outside of a school setting and nowadays thanks to the internet I think you can learn so much online that university might not even cover it all for you and you can kind of pick and choose what you learn and I think there's a lot of freedom in that. I am going to stop talking now because I could just keep going with this but I really hope I didn't ramble too much in this video it's just something that's been on my mind lately and I appreciate you guys all stopping by and watching my video today so I will see you guys all in my next video very very soon. Thanks guys, bye!